Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley. Co-hosting today with me is my fiance and partner, Dr. Frank Powers. Well, we've got a great uh, show today, Frank. We're I'm excited. Be, yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to be talking about widowhood and dating, the white elephant in the room. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that Frank and my book, Open to Love, The Secrets of Senior Dating, is now available on Amazon. Frank and I uh, did it together. I wanted to also remind you that 100% of the proceeds for the book, Frank and I are donating to the Open to Hope Foundation with the mission of helping people find hope after loss. Our guest today is Jean Jacobitz. One of the things she is is a clinical nurse specialist. I don't know if you know that I am also a clinical nurse specialist only in psychiatry and you're in midwifery. I was at the University of Rochester and you were saying that you came from Columbia, right? Yes, I did. And now you're an adjunct uh, instructor in graduate advanced practice nursing program in midwifery, women's health program at Georgetown University. And something that's very exciting is that you are doing research, cutting edge research on the health effects of bereavement and particularly among widows, which I love. Mm -hmm. So important. And also you are on the board of directors of the W Connection, which is a wonderful organization for widows. So thank you for being on our show today. Um, talk a little bit about the death of your husband and how you got involved with the W Connection and interested in widows. So my husband passed away in 2010. He had um, done fairly well. He had non-smokers lung cancer, of course, had never smoked and was vegetarian. And it was just one of those things that happens. And he responded very quickly, but we knew it was a diagnosis that was self-limited to four years. And so after David passed away, we had practiced together. He was an OBGYN, was a midwife. And the last eight years before he passed, we practiced together. We had before that had separate practices. And after David died, I found that I needed to relocate because everyone in the community knew us. And people whose you know kids were growing up would come up to me how is he and i would be i would be revisiting everything over and over again and i had that feeling you know if you've experienced loss where you can't breathe and i just needed to find a space and both of my daughters were not living where i was living they were in a lot but they were in the middle of starting their college and careers and um when i relocated Coincidentally, a friend of mine worked with another woman mentoring high school kids in New York City who were trying to apply to college. In their discussion, my friend said to this person that I had been widowed and I just moved to New York City. And she said, well, I'm part of this new young nonprofit called the W Connection. This is now 2012. I did not know about them. I was in New Jersey where I raised my family. And at the time, the W Connection was not virtual. It was a brick and mortar. It was in, it started out in 2009. It was still in people's living rooms and locally in different rented space. The W Connection was interested in setting up virtual groups for people in other parts where there wasn't a brick and mortar group. So that's how I first entered into the W Connection. And so when I found the W Connection, it was, God, they get it. I don't have to explain constantly how, where I am in this. It was only really two years, two and a half years out. We had shared not just our marriage, but professionally we, we right. were together. And it, so it was a loss of both pieces, you know, my professional partnership, my personal partnership, friends meant well, um, trying to introduce me to people. And it was never, you know, friends think they know you. 
Mm-hmm. And then you find out sometimes they don't really know you that well. They try hard because it makes people feel good if they can heal you. Well, like, they also look to what they would like exactly. in a partner. Yeah. Ex- true. That's very true. And so they think what's going to work for them will work for you, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, I think it was hard for people because no one in our community of friends had ever been divorced or had had a loss. So it was, it was a weird space to be in. And once I moved to New York, I suddenly started to like shift a little bit in terms of my ability to move forward because with the W connection, the focus is not on the person you lost. The focus is really on, okay, what can we do as a community to help you find your new space? And in my webinar committee, the members kept saying, where we pick topics for the webinars every month, they would whisper, what about dating? And and I started to realize really? <laughs> that it was starting to be something they were almost guilt feeling guilty about, oh, what about dating? And for me, about, you know, it was a couple of years after David passed away that I did start dating. And the first person was someone I knew in college. So it was a safe space for me. But it was a wonderful way to just start to feel again. I wasn't looking for marriage. I didn't, I don't know what I was looking for other than to go to dinner with someone. That loneliness spot. Yeah. Yeah. And to kind of reclaim yourself as a woman. My brain immediately went to 20 years old dating. I have a very good friend in New York who had been divorced and she did match a lot. And she kept saying to me, you have to go online. And for me, it was going into a meat factory or, (laughs) oh my God, how do I, I can't do something like this. You would call her a dating buddy. Buddy, yes. Yeah. I think a lot of us after we become widowed, we think someone perfect is going to just jump from the sky and fall right in front of us. Magic. Right? Or they have to be perfect. Yeah. Well, that too, you know, because all of a sudden, well, what do you want now? Well, let's see. What did I have? What pieces do I want to change a little bit? And you get so caught up in your head about that, that it's an impossible achievement for anyone to have, you know, an impossible pers- person to meet. So I dragged my feet and she kept saying, well, I'll write it for you. And I was like, no, 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 no. Not the true dating buddy. So I did do it. And first time out, I met Stuart. Wow. Wow. Just like that. And when when I went down to DC and our students come on campus every trimester for every course you teach. And so we met each other and then it just... That was in December. I came back down in January, then came back down in February. And then I moved in April of 2019 before COVID to right into the city of Washington, D.C. And what was so interesting is that I realized if I give advice to the widows that I know in the W Connection is go with your instincts. You're still able to have them. Um, and don't be desperate. You know, it's like that first job when ki- when kids graduate from college or graduate school, you want to say to them, yes, you're like, oh my goodness, they want me, but make sure that it's what you want, that this is someone you can talk to if that's important to you. Well, what's important to you? And then if you have this little, you know, I call it the angel whispering in your ear saying, walk away, you should walk away. Like, don't feel that you have to take someone because you may be alone forever. Yeah. Right. You don't have to be desperate. And yeah. that's exactly. A, that's a it should... yeah. And yeah. I remember thinking, oh my God, this is fun. <laughs> you know? I, I it should it. be. <laughs> it should be fun. That's what we say in our book all the time yeah. is if it's not fun, you're not going to do it. So right. yeah. You've got to make it fun. And that's the reason why a dating buddy is really nice to have because you can talk to the person and you can say all the things that you you were thinking about to the other person and mm-hmm. get a, get some and, feedback. And she pushed you a little bit, which yes. is a good, a good yeah, buddy. Yeah, she did. She's a great dating buddy. And she was a great coach because she said, 
You have to talk on the phone before you meet. Don't have them pick you up where you live. Like she exactly she all the things. rules that right? you don't think right? about because dating was so far a long ago that you, it's a totally different kind of experience when you come back into it. Now, so you do need to have you do need to have those rules. Yeah. She's so yeah. helpful. She was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and she was. I remember her saying, "I can't believe you met someone the first time you go on I, that. That's not fair." <laughs> Well, I'll have to tell you, yeah, I'll have to tell you that I met uh, a Franklin Silver Singles the very first, I did, I, well, we had one date before I had me, one and, day he, before and he, he came with his Shriner's name on his, Dave, and so he really set me up to be looking pretty good. <laughs> But, but Frank and I had traded websites. We knew Frank's been a therapist yeah. for 40 years, so and so have I. So, you know, <laughs> in combination. But I wanted to ask you, you're doing this research uh, among widows. Do you see any link between uh, dating? You know, one of the things that Frank and I have talked about is we keep hearing all this stuff about loneliness, but when we hear it, nobody talks about dating. Uh, yeah, what, what is well, what, I, what I can is really you. odd? Mm -hmm. I can tell you that if you look at marital status, um, that is what people, we know that people who find a partner versus someone who stays alone are healthier. They live longer. They live longer. They're healthier. Mm -hmm. And part of that is loneliness. You know, that piece of loneliness is not there. So marital status is huge. And everything that I see and that I re I've read about it's so it's so important that women and I talk to about women because men are a whole different thing. Widowers they tend to marry faster, and th th it's just we call it the brisket brigade that shows up. You know, um, you know th that brisket brigade comes, and there's all these people right at the at the door. Um, but for women it depends who your role model was. You know, I had my mother and my mother-in-law who were friends and I was close to both. My mother-in-law never remarried and she should have. She was a beautiful woman, but she didn't for whatever reason. My mother, who was also wonderful, my husband, I introduced her to my neighbor when we first moved to this one area in New Jersey and they were married for over 20 years. So I had two different models I saw. And at one point, after my husband died, I will never forget this, my mother-in-law got in the car, I was picking her up, and she had just been in the supermarket, and she tore off, you know, the little tabs with phone numbers, and she said, this is like a dating service, maybe you'd be interested. And I was so surprised, and I said to her, I didn't expect that from you, and she said, I should have done it. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens you're both therapists, so I'm I'm preaching to the choir a bit. But I think, from my experience, what happens time time doesn't exist when you're grieving, and whether it's been a year or ten years, you're sort of stuck a little bit in a, a different universe, almost a parallel universe sometimes. And if you don't pay attention and you don't focus on your own, not just your emotional needs, but your physical needs. Mm -hmm. you can end up with far-reaching consequences from simply from the grief and the loneliness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's threatening. yes. Life yeah, is. And dating is so important. And I, I wish there were a different word for it as we, we are more mature and we're starting to look for a partner because when you hear dating, you're thinking of yourself in your teen years and your early 20s and we're much wiser. Right. We're in a very you know, different Frank, Frank says something that I think is so true. He says friendships, you know, yes. building a friendship. I always talk with men about the fact, you know, you're really wanting to have a friendship first. And, and it is more important. And when you're younger, you don't necessarily think of friendship. You think of having a connection and maybe even a physical connection. Yeah. As you get older, the emotional warmth and connection and the feeling of being with someone that really gets you and you get that. Yeah. I can tell you that the reason I got interested, the main reason was in the early years when I was part of the W Connection and when people heard I was in healthcare, members, they were coming up to me talking about 
all their diagnoses since they lost their partner or spouse. We had eight women in one group in the Upper West Side, ages 40 to 67, that had breast cancer. All wow. of them were diagnosed and at different points along the way. None of them had been remarried. None of them, and some were five, five years out and six and seven years out. And I said to Dawn that night, I said, Dawn, there's something here. There is something going on. This is not, this is a cluster. And I also have a, an MPH, a degree in public health. And I said, if I put that hat on, this should raise a little red flag because sure. this is not, a widowhood is a risk factor mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. illness. So wow. I think dating is one of the things that we should encourage. Now, let me just say one thing. You, you talked a little bit about remarriage. I will have to say that in this day and age, I don't think people have to sign up to remarry. Frank and I like to talk about it as parallel relationships now. And there's so many women who won't get involved again because they're afraid they're they don't afraid. want to be a nurse yeah. or a person. But you don't have to. And you don't have to be either. That's huge. That That's a good point that you brought that up because I, heard, I hear that all the time. Yes, we have. Mm -hmm choices in life we can they're male nurses and female nurses you don't have to be a nurse i mean we're together five years and uh, marriage is not something on the table because we each have our kids we, we're not having kids again and there's no luckily our society as a woman you can travel and not be married and be, and moved, travel with someone it's moved from the paradigm in the 80s when i first got exactly. married the paradigm has moved. And by the way, I want to say that I'm 84 and Frank's 80 because I want to tell women. It's I like older women. <laughs> I want to tell women there are people out there. There really are. If you want to take the time, the energy, if you're interested in going in that direction. Yeah. I remember a member saying to me, um, oh, I don't know at this age. I think at the time, maybe she was 75 or 70. I mean, she was young. Young. I mean, no, but yeah, she, it's, I said to her, you're not dead. You are, you know, this yeah. is this is your opportunity to have choice in ways that you're free of the all of the societal pressures of having a home and balancing your career and children and, you know, it's time it's, to have fun. And it's, it's, a, it's a lot. Of, I think it's a free it's a freedom maybe we didn't have as much before. Um, but I think I, it's, your point is so well taken about the caregiver, because that's a huge thing for everyone. I mean, I felt it too. I was not doing that again. Frank and I want to thank you all for joining us on the show today. And we always want to remind you that open to hope that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to open to hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.